and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. In and out, in and out. Hopefully you can trust me now. I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I do. Good. Well, me too movement. Hashtag me too. I'm just devastated. I just can't even get anything together. Everything seems so everything everything ever everything seems so hard for me. And I don't even have a regular train, it's wibbly wobbly. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. In and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. In and out, in and out. Hopefully you can trust me now. I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Good. Well, me too movement. Hashtag me too. Mental manipulation is when people seek to exploit things that are the foundation of relationships such as trust, understanding, and mutual respect in order to benefit themselves in some way. And some very easy ways that you can spot manipulation in terms of emotionally and mentally is for one, they use your words against you to make you do something you don't want to do. Two is that they don't really care for how you're feeling. Three is that they make you feel guilty or ashamed. I'm going to leave some articles and videos in the description because those help me a lot. Maybe you might be experiencing something like it, so I'm just gonna leave those linked below. So going back, it's just like regular personal life stuff, but some of the stuff that kind of have to do with what's happened is in October he asked me, are you happy with your home? I low-key want that security system. And I told him that I was very happy and then he texted me back that night saying, yeah, what's the name of your fancy security system? I'd like to research it. Ha ha ha. And at this point, I disclosed which security system I had. But I also kind of told him, like, why I liked it. At this point, I felt like he was a friend, and I wanted to give him whatever help he needed in terms of security. And then November 1st, he texted me asking if I was doing, like, this TV interview that was supposed to be about mukbang and they had to reach out to me and so I told him hey I was approached but I turned it down are you doing it and he said I turned it down today too too invasive of my home and potential safety issue and the neighbors would have a field day with the camera crew trucks outside and then he said but yeah I didn't know what level paranoid I was at so I feel better knowing I'm not alone lol like this moment I really feel like cemented our friendship because I felt like there was this one common ground that we shared there was this one thing that I feel like everyone's a little paranoid, but I feel like to the level where you are very paranoid about feeling safe and where most people feel the most safe. And he was that again. I just didn't want to feel like that ever again. It had been a really long night and I went to sleep at around 7 a.m. I was in and out of sleep until around 2 p.m. At this point, I had already missed text messages from both of them separately and I ended up calling Zach at 2.20. And when I called him, I didn't mention anything that happened yesterday. So I said, you know, I was up all night editing. I know I should have gone to sleep early, but I woke up. I'm not feeling too great. I think I have to cancel today because it, it was going to be another three-person collab day. For some reason, the thought of texting Nick at this moment, because I had missed calls and missed text messages from him, gave me this like, like I started getting very short of breath. And so I washed my face and around 3.20, I texted them and I'm just gonna go through just the whole thread of text messages. And so I texted them at 3.29 p.m. and I said, hey guys, sorry I've been in and out of sleep all afternoon after staying up late after getting back. I don't think I'll be able to film any collabs today. I'm feeling really sick and I realized I had a few sponsors due before a year end that are really time sensitive. I'm so sorry, I hope you guys understand, but I'm really happy that we knocked some out yesterday. And I put my phone down, I put it on silent, and these are the next messages I got. You just now realized, Stephanie, 
I have been sitting here for five hours. When you were going in and out of sleep, you should have picked up the phone and given me a call, not leave me hanging. You didn't like it when Veronica did that to you. So no, I'm sorry, I do not understand. I texted him back. I am so sorry for making you feel that way. I sincerely apologize. I was so drained and slightly out of it this morning and I'm so upset I didn't call you back earlier because I would never want you to because I would never want you to feel like I don't respect your time. Again, I'm truly sorry. And out of respect for our developing friendship, I do want to be transparent and let you know I was uncomfortable with yesterday's video. I'm so sorry if I let you think or miscommunicated in any way that I wanted to talk about Veronica, but I truly did not. I mentioned that I wouldn't mind addressing you and me as it pertains to Shukbung, that neither of us had any hard feelings towards each other after what happened. And I did give you my perspective on what happened when we hung out, and I felt as if it was misrepresented in the video. I've mentioned to you many times that although Veronica and I aren't friends, and I am hurt or annoyed by some things that happened between us, I have absolutely no ill will towards her, and I feel some compassion for her situation since I've gotten to know her prior. Again, I understand this is your video, and I respect your feelings about the situation, but this is how I feel. Again, I'm sincerely so sorry for not getting back to you in time this morning, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay, and I'm so sorry for this morning. He texted me back. Then why did you tell me at your house that you wanted to address it on my channel? Also, why are you texting this to Zach? I messaged you privately. And I responded, I want to address the issue here since all three of us were in the video, and I also owe Zach an apology for this morning and not keeping him updated on the schedule. I'm so sorry for any inconveniences I've caused. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I'm so sorry if I made you feel that way. I wanted to let you know because I didn't know that there was a gap of miscommunication and understanding between us till the middle of that video we were filming. I was okay with talking about Shukbang as it pertains to just you and me. Again, I apologize for any misunderstanding there could have been. I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay and I'm so sorry again for this morning as well. He responded with, You already talked to Zach this morning, but ignored me for five hours after that. Don't play games. I texted it back and I said, again, I'm so sorry if there was any miscommunication and if I made you feel that way. I wanted to take this time to clarify miscommunication about the video because I, I didn't know there was a gap in understanding till the middle of filming the video. And to apologize for this morning, I truly am so sorry. I know that I impacted your schedule today and I'm so sorry about that. He said, awesome. So which day would you like to reschedule for? And I responded, I know that you're in LA for only a couple more days and have a lot scheduled and I'm so sorry for today. <sighs> sorry. I do have to get back to you since I do have approaching deadlines and I know my fiance already had things planned for me and the dog goes for the holidays. Again, I'm so sorry for today and I hope you're able to enjoy the rest of your day. And he responded with, Literally at any point in this conversation, you could have resumed with our videos planned for tonight. Please talk to me. Zach told me he wants to be left out. I reached out half a dozen times already. Please talk to me there. The text messages that he sent, please give me a call. I got your group message, but it would be nice to talk to you here. Can you give me a call, please? I haven't heard from you personally since yesterday, and I feel we need to chat. You only message things to the group chat, but not to me here. This is going to be my last time reaching out for the evening. I'm feeling hurt. Please talk to me, not through Zach. I also had eight missed calls, some of them FaceTimes from Nick at the time. And later on, after all of this, there were some Instagram posts and stories that were made that I, I didn't know, but they were made while this conversation was happening. And the first is his Instagram post that's still up right now as of filming this, and I'm gonna put it right here. And it says, I'm this effing close to making an exposing video. Should I? What the F is wrong with people? So rude, so self-serving, and inconsiderate. And then he posted a story with a black screen. Making some tea, you guys. You won't believe the audacity people have, but I have lots of receipts and audio clips. Every time he texted me or called me, I feel like... And the audio clips that he posted on his story, audio clips, I got alarmed because I felt weird about that. I never consented 
to any audio clips. So that means these were illegally recorded. When and where and how? I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know if this was just an empty threat to scare me even more or if something happened that I don't know about. The only thing I can do is check what I have of security footage. And I went through all of Saturday when he was at my house. He was here for about five-ish hours. And out of those five hours that he was here, I used the restroom once. And during that time that I slipped away to the restroom very, very quickly, the one time that I did, without letting me know what he was doing, he took multiple pictures inside my house. And then immediately he started looking around at the ceiling. I didn't have any cool light fixtures up there. I just don't know what else would be up there other than security cameras. Seeing that footage was shattering and so angering because after everything that he made me feel safe enough to tell him about, I told him about the one thing that I don't talk to anyone about anymore. And I don't know if I would be this alarmed if throughout our entire interactions, I feel like he had never had any good or even harmless intentions with everything that he did. The way that he did it during the five hours he was here, the minute that I slipped away to the restroom, you knew why I'm so paranoid. You know why I have such a hard time letting people into my home. It was a very violating feeling and it was just something that I don't think I'll ever be able to understand. But again, I felt like, again, that was my fault. I felt like, yes, this is gross, yes, this is creepy, but really, it's your problem, Stephanie, because you have this, this trauma that maybe not a lot of people have, and maybe even though Nick knows about your trauma and knows how crazy you are about home security, maybe he doesn't really understand. And then I came across this, and this is where I'm gonna get really angry <laughs> for this part of the video, because there is no part of this video that I can stand by and say that I support Nick as a person. I'm just devastated. I just can't even get anything together. Everything seems so everything everything ever everything seems so hard for me. And I don't even have a regular train, so wibbly wobbly. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. As someone who has a platform, this was a video that he took and consented to posting onto YouTube. It looked like he deleted it. I don't know if he ever addressed it. There is this channel called Shade Bug who uploaded it, but with tons of edits. Those voice edits and those face edits are not my doing, but I'm just gonna insert some clips here because I think when someone shows me a pattern of predatory behavior, I'm not going to not listen. I'm not gonna ignore it. Come on over, we'll hang out, we'll do our stuff, we can mukbang and then do stuff after. You know, we were, it was not about just film with me, it was about like, we're gonna get it on. I literally blew dry my hair all over again. I put on so much perfume, I wasted it. I wasted my $90 perfume. But I made sure I washed my extra good. And they eat all your food and they leave and you're like, I wasted my time and I scrubbed my for this experience because I was nice enough to say I'll eat whatever the you want to eat because I'm gonna get sucked you know like okay I'm gonna bend over because I, you know like I'm gonna give you what you want or I'm gonna get what I want and nothing happened waiting to get my action well no wonder dude you're a loser I am in New York for a very limited amount of time my time is important. I would have rather spent it alone. This was supposed to enhance my trip, not make it more frustrating. But you have to understand where I'm coming from, too. But you have to understand where I'm coming from, too. I'm clearly signaling to you, I am ready. That you are here for to be ready. I'm not going to just grab it because you will come back and it's going to be the little Me Too movement. The little Me Too movement. Oh. He's not here to be ready for you. Nobody is here to be ready for you. And it's not the little Me Too movement. How dare you discredit an entire movement that the sole purpose was giving people a voice who didn't have a voice. How dare you discredit the entire thing that saved so many people because you had a bad date in New York City. 
the little Me Too movement. Oh, no one's going to believe you. No one's going to believe you because it was inappropriate. And that's why you didn't grab it. You didn't grab it because of the Me Too movement. You didn't grab it because there was a hashtag on Twitter. You didn't grab it because that's sexual assault if he didn't want you to. So sorry. Um, in 2017, I posted an Instagram <laughs> picture of me sitting on like this red lifeguard um, thing and I said, I was so scared to even talk about what happened that I captioned it something just to make me feel like I had a voice and I had strength. I posted, sometimes you gotta be your own damn lifeguard, even if your head is too heavy to float. Hashtag me too. That was over two years ago. That and YouTube, I can really say, feeling like I had a voice and feeling like I could say something and someone would listen to me, honestly saving me. <laughs> I was so happy that there was a way for me and my story or at least make other people feel like, hey, you're not weird for having this trauma. You're not weird that you live life differently now. And you want to discredit all of that because you had a bad date. I think that's disgusting but reckless for your audience. I think that's an incredibly reckless way to use your platform. Five hours wasted. Nothing. Five hours wasted. Nothing. You are freezing out on the... What type... Hey Siri! What's the weather in New York City right now, please? It appears to be clear right now in New York. And what? Temperature of 50 degrees. 50 mother degrees. That's cold. That's 20 degrees from frozen. Did he cuddle me? Did he try to keep me warm? No, nothing. Oh my God, what a loser. I'm sorry if the cold made you feel uncomfortable. One of the biggest reasons I was even scared to make this video was because I knew that it looked stupid. I Everything sounds dramatic. And, oh really, you were scared? Why did you stay? And it, there was nothing. Like I felt like I had, I don't know why, in any other situation, nobody ever needs a reason to feel scared or unsafe or uncomfortable, but I felt like I needed to have a reason. And I didn't, and so I stayed, and I tried to make him less angry and not mad at me. And I was scared he was going to say, then why did you stay if you were so scared? I'm sorry if there's miscommunication. I'm really tired. I should have gone, I should have gone home earlier. I'm like, well, you went... You certainly wasted my time too if you're saying you should have gone home earlier, meaning you didn't really value the time spent. Because if you have a good time, you don't regret staying long because you had a good time. Do you ever say to someone, do you ever- Someone that, oh, I should have gone home earlier if you were having a good time? No, that means he wasn't having a good time. Wasted my time, mother- Bye. Bye. Maybe he wasn't having a good time because I wasn't having a good time, but I was too scared of you because you made me feel manipulated and fearful of what you would do. You made me scared of your anger. And so no, I wasn't having a good time. This wasn't an old clip from years ago. This was recent from his trip to New York City. I'm gonna leave the edited version that Shade Bang posted linked in the description. A lot has happened even after that. There's just been a lot of online bullying and I'm someone that, <laughs> I've been through high school bullying. I've, I talk about it a lot more on my other channel. He knows that I've talked about it with him before. It just was a gross abuse of power and an abuse of, a, of his platform and his voice. First I felt Again, like more shame and embarrassment because a lot of the people that he tagged are people that he knew that I would say, oh my god, I've watched her since high school or oh, I love her, you know, I did a collab with her. And these are people that I respected. I don't want to believe that they know the full story of what he's done. I also felt scared because now it felt like if I say something, it's not just going up against Nick, but look at all the friends he has. You know, who, who do I have? And I just felt like I couldn't say anything because it would be going up against all of these people. I was telling them a story about someone who, something some, something happened, someone did something to me, and some, there was just a lot that broke my spirits. Or I'm gonna get what I want. And I was telling them the story, and one of the inside joke from that story was in and out of sleep. And you don't understand, but then I told a few other YouTubers, I tagged them on Instagram, um, as well as my friends, and I, they all know, I was like, 
they know the story, and they, the, 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 the thing that, the thing, the, the major thing that they take away from that was the in and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. I've just been in and out of sleep, and I don't know what's going on, but, you know, I got things to do. I just got, ah, I got things to do. You been, have you been in and out of sleep? Oh, in and out of sleep. Oh, my gosh. Just, in and out of sleep right now. <laughs> They're like, what the f***? That is the most obnoxious, bizarre thing they've ever heard. Like, what the f***? In and out of sleep, we turn something that really bothered me into something that we could laugh about. When we were at the club, I'm telling you, I should have put this on YouTube, on YouTube. But also, I mean, it's just you have to laugh about things to get over things. That's just how what I believe. Well, all four, well, it's us four plus the gay couple, the other gay married couple, and the girl and the gay guy. So it was all like 12 of us. We're all sitting together and we're like, in and out of sleep. 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 And then the people around us. In and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. And I, me and Honey started bawling with tears running down. We're like, in and out, in and out, in and out. Oh my God, it was so funny. And we're like, in and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you.